In order to understand a hazardous material incident, we must first understand what a hazardous material is. Several federal agencies provide a definition of a hazardous material, but for the purposes of this program, we will focus on the U.S. Department of Transportation, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, and the Occupational Safety and Health Administration definitions. The term hazardous material was first defined by the U.S. Department of Transportation in 1975 as a substance or material which has been determined to be capable of posing an unreasonable risk to health, safety, and property when transported. The term hazardous substance is defined by the U.S. Department of Transportation, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, and the Occupational Safety and Health Administration as any substance that can produce an adverse effect on the health or safety of persons exposed. Simply stated, any hazardous material or substance that when released from its container can cause harm to humans or the environment. Thus, with these definitions in mind, the unplanned or unexpected release of hazardous materials creates a hazardous materials incident. Engine 50 on scene, two story block building, fully charged with smoke. Make this a W3. Hazardous materials incidents can hurt us in many ways. The acronym TEAM CPR can help us recognize how. Thermal hazards, such as fire or explosion. Etiological hazards, such as blood or sewage. Asphyxiation hazards such as oxygen deficient atmospheres as may be created by carbon dioxide or nitrogen. Mechanical hazards such as projectiles from an explosion, trips or falls. Chemical hazards such as acid burns or toxic effects. Physical hazards such as energized electrical equipment or unstable vehicles. Also the psychological hazards such as the stress associated with witnessing violent death. Radiation hazards, such as radioactive particles emitted by radioactive substances. Remember that Team CPR is intended to give you a tool to enable you to recognize all the hazards that may be present at a hazardous materials incident. Look at the whole picture. By this time, you must be asking, what exactly is a first responder at the awareness level? A first responder at the awareness level is persons likely to discover or witness a hazardous materials incident or emergency in their normal course of duties. They may be first on the scene and have the duty to act. First responders at the awareness level are expected to recognize that a hazardous material incident is occurring and identify the materials involved and do so with no risk to their own safety. Isolate the involved areas, deny access to the area, and remove uninjured and uncontaminated personnel. Ensuring your personal safety may include the use of personal protective equipment supplied by your employer or other means of protection. Notification is the responsibility of notifying the next level of response, for example, calling the fire department, police department, or emergency management. The extent to which you apply the awareness level goals of recognition, identification, isolation, protection, and notification will be determined by your employer's emergency response plan. The emergency response plan will also define your duty to act. In order to ensure your ability to make sound decisions during the initial stages of a hazardous materials incident, all first responders should have access to the U.S. Department of Transportation's Emergency Response Guidebook, commonly known as a DOT ERG. The ERG will assist responders by providing information on recognition and identification of materials, basic protective actions and initial isolation perimeters, and may serve as the initial site safety plan, provided you do not exceed your level of training and personal protective equipment. Remember, the DOT ERG is a tool and will usually indicate the need for responders trained to a higher level. It is your responsibility to notify the next level of response. The Emergency Planning and Community Right to Know Act, EPCRA, also known as the Superfund Amendments and Reauthorization Act, SARA, Title III, was created by Congress in 1986 and adopted by Florida in 1988. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency administers the program and the Florida Division of Emergency Management implements the program. With the passage of EPCRA came the creation of the State Emergency Response Commission, CERC, whose membership is governor-appointed and consists of representatives from a wide array of different professions, including environmental, emergency management, health, fire, law enforcement, industry, and others. 
Along with establishing policies and procedures for implementing EPCRA, the CERC is also responsible for appointing members to Florida's 11 local emergency planning committees, LEPCs. The purpose of EPCRA is to encourage emergency planning for hazardous materials at the state and local level and to increase the public's awareness of the potential chemical hazards that may exist in their communities. Chemical data collected from facility owners and operators is used by emergency planners and responders to develop hazardous materials emergency plans for responding to and recovering from incidents involving the release of hazardous materials. These plans are reviewed and approved by the CERC. All of the chemical data collected is available to the general public upon request. Florida's approach to implementing EPCRA is unique. The Florida program is responsible for all sections of EPCRA, CERC and LEPC direction and support, implementation of EPCRA planning requirements, technical assistance and compliance education to industry regarding all EPCRA chemical inventory and toxic release reporting requirements, assessment of responder training needs and methods to promote cost-effective training opportunities, and analysis and enforcement of federal requirements for emergency notification of accidental releases. In addition, the EPCRA is housed with the Risk Management Planning Program, which adds an important prevention component to reduce or mitigate the effects of an accidental release in the communities. The EPCRA program's location in the Division of Emergency Management provides a unique implementation philosophy grounded in community safety and response. Since various federal and state regulations require reporting of hazardous material spills to multiple state and local agencies, the State Warning Point serves as the Consolidated Reporting Center for many regulatory reporting requirements. The State Warning Point, a 24-hour communication center, is housed within Florida's Division of Emergency Management and receives more than 2,000 reports of hazardous materials incidents each year. Its central mission is to provide efficient and effective communications among local, state, and federal government agencies and to serve as the 24-hour emergency notification center for all types of incidents which may require emergency action. The standard which you, the emergency responder, must adhere to is OSHA's 29 CFR 1910.120, known as Hazardous Waste Operations and Emergency Response or HAZWOPER for short. More specifically, paragraph Q of this standard is what relates to you as the first responder. The first responder at the awareness level has been defined by OSHA to be an employee who is likely to discover or witness the release of a hazardous substance, who has been trained and who has the duty to initiate an emergency response sequence by notifying the proper authorities. The standard is intended to ensure the safety of employees. The employer bears the responsibility to ensure training consistent with the employer's emergency response plan. That plan should define the employee's responsibility based on their level of training as outlined in the employer's plan. We've got uh, diesel fuel and natural gas. This program in conjunction with your employer's emergency response plan and the annual refresher training will enable you to understand your role in a hazardous materials emergency. The OSHA HAZWOPER Regulation 29 CFR 1910.120 defines five levels of training for emergency response to hazardous materials incidents. Number one, first responder awareness level. Number two, first responder operational level. Number three, hazardous materials technician. Number four, hazardous materials specialist. Number five, incident commander. The degree of technical competency varies greatly between the five levels of training. First responders are expected to operate in the defensive mode. This defensive mode means defensive actions where there is no contact with the released material. For example, remote shutoffs, isolations, notifications, and protection. Hazardous materials technicians and specialists operate in the offensive mode with over 160 hours of training. The offensive mode means actions are taking in appropriate chemical protective clothing to reduce incidental contact with the material. For example, plugging and patching a leaking container or neutralizing a corrosive substance, 
In addition, emergency medical services responders will require additional training in order to meet the recommended competency level for dealing with victims as outlined in NFPA 473. Emergency medical responders should be trained to the EMS level 1 or level 2 in addition to the first responder awareness level in accordance to CERT guidelines for EMS responders to hazardous materials training. EMS level 2 responders may provide care to patients who pose significant risk of secondary contamination and are trained to perform decontamination and other protective measures. EMS level 1 responders should not provide care to patients who pose a significant risk to secondary contamination. EMS responders are encouraged to seek additional training to ensure their personal safety and to comply with pending administrative rule change. Now that you've been introduced to hazardous materials, the expected role of the first responder at the awareness level and the requirements for training and planning, you are ready to move on to the next phase. Throughout the remainder of this presentation, with the guidance of your instructor, you will be provided with the tools, the skills, and attitudes to ensure your personal safety in the event you are confronted with a hazardous materials emergency.